likes everyone. It's very hard, very, very great to see everyone enjoy the film and, and the entire team getting a standing ovation. This is phenomenal. So we'll be starting our Q&A now. Um, so I'm very honored and uh, very delighted that today we have Amri al who is a professor in uh, DePaul University in film writing, as well as a filmmaker, and she will be moderating today's Q&A. Amri, thank you so much. We appreciate it. There's no way I can't do this. There's no way I should not be doing this. 
So I, I really wanted to take this on. And I'm just glad that I thought that I was good enough to take this on.
we grow up, as Bowman said, and then we come to an age where the only way we can become men or women is to push away momentarily, to, to leave the dock of safety that is your mother or your father. And in doing that, you tend to sometimes be a little bit hard about it, but, but because it's hard to push away. So we find reasons, and then once you push away, you realize, oh, that was, so I think we all, I think men and women respectively, every child goes through that in some way yeah. or another. So I think my job was really just to see that sort of gentle vision. We didn't have to sort of rush it slaves at its pace, they're living their lives, and, uh, and it's refreshing to be able to write a, a script like that and see it so just wonderfully performed. And I, I hadn't met them when I wasn't on set, and I remember seeing the first cut that I saw, and I'm saying this before, I, I, I was so amazed by it. Um, because to me, I was writing in English, obviously, to start. Okay. Um, so there's a translation there, and then there's a, there's a matter of syntax. Um, and there's a there's a pattern, something that you know I know what I was saying this before, like somebody like Emma Stone, she you, some people do it, and some people good actors, some can do it, and some don't do it. You either get the sound of what we're after. And I saw this right away, and it was in the first act, and I said, oh, I just breathe the sigh. And also the oh, I'm gonna be horrible, the actor, the beautiful actress that plays the sister. And so that was, my, that was my experience, and I thought my job was just to keep it as simple as possible and see the vision forward, and they were going to do the rest, and they did. Yeah, and I think you say it so well. I think it is because of the simplicity and the stillness that we are able to really see the performance and the story, and, and that's why the film is so compelling and moving. So I'm now going to turn to the audience. I'm sure that there are a lot of people. I, let's, and I'm kind of going to kind of just move around the room or snake around the, uh, the, the theater. Um, is the lady in the middle? I think I saw you raise your hand first. Yeah, go ahead. Mike, Mike, I, I'll get you the mic. Go on. <laughs> 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 That's a good question. To just a, be a backgrounder of Indian culture and that steel and glass thing and that correlation uh, and uh, son and father relation. So can you just explain? So more about I do Alex say Hindi bhot achhi tarah samjhte. So aap jawab de diye Alex. I I think Alex what what the lady is asking is. What was the correlation? Why architect? And uh, architect came very early on uh, in the script. Architects build houses. This home is about a broken home. The hole in the ceiling is about his broken home. And his broken soul and his incomplete career, which he needs to fix if he has to prove to his father that he is a man and that he is free of the nagging that he may have done. <laughs> I, like, I, I like it very for everything. The only good thing, I love it very for everything. But I'll tell you the one thing I, 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 I get, the only thing I can give, I'll tell you what the credit is. I chose a wonderful team. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have another question over here. Across your own race, you, you just want to be by yourself. 
you don't want to move even though you promised your wife or whatever. That is a real dynamics in our age group. Whoever is the, and that is portrayed so well. It hit home, I mean, I, I mean, we are having daily discussions. My sister doesn't want to move from Delhi to Hyderabad because her one son lives in Hyderabad, the other lives in America. So this is the, this is the thing that's happening in our age group. And especially when we become aged and feeble and the children are feeling guilty, they don't want to leave their parents. And they, so this is a tremendous demand that I mean, said you portrayed it so well. So thank you. Thank you. So, um, uh, this gentleman is right here in front of me. Uh, no, 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 I want them to be able to see me. It's <laughs> a so question with Baman Irani. How are you, sir? Congratulations. Hey, brother, it's really lovely to see you. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Asim Tara. You often talked about how you've been a late bloomer, you became an actor in, in your 40s. Who says that I'm a late bloomer? This is a question I want to ask you. You're such a fine director. You're such a fine director. It's such an assured uh, director debut. And it took you 65 years to make your first film. What were you waiting for? And, and, and I'm, I'm curious about what are, the other, who are the other directors who inspired you to get you to this stage? It would have been 55, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I believe uh, this day no one will realize the I, I would like to believe that. But apart from that, I don't believe I'm going to run my timeline or the structure of my life to what everybody thinks it should be, like getting married and so on, which I did actually. The only thing I did in a hurry was getting married and had kids, you know. And after that, every single beat in my career, whether it was, you know, when I started off as a waiter, and I worked as a, in my family wafer shop, 14 years, uh, I had to bring up the kids. I needed to make the mula or bring home the baking or mula. Uh, theater after that. Photography, so I 14 years of photography. And then theater, and then finally acting in films. So, in many ways, I, I'm not consoling myself why I came into the game so late. But I'll say this, that everything I did, whether it was being a waiter or, or sitting at the shop, I learned about cinema in each of those fields. Sitting at the shop, I was observing characters. Every single day, I was to make notes about every character that walked into the shop. I would make notes and understand characters and how they reveal themselves even by paying money, for example. And then, and then photography, it helps me telling, telling stories through pictures and imagery. And then theater, it taught me, it taught me uh, the discipline of drama. And then finally, you know, everything, that, the, the thing that actually I needed to learn was, was the writing. Just because you're in the business, I've been, I've been acting for, what, 30 odd years? It doesn't mean I'm automatically qualified as a writer, or for that matter, as a director. You got to pay your dues. I think I've paid my dues in some <laughs> before I took the pledge. So we have another question right over here. Beautifully done film, and Mona, well, sir, I have great respect for your talent and what you've done in this film, all of you. Thank you. I have two questions. One is about architecture. I am an architect, and just the other day I was talking to my son and telling him that nowadays there's no talent involved because I'm from old school, I do drafting, and not in the computer. I have visions and I put them on paper. How did you get the idea to talk to your son and tell him if the computer fails, you will not be able to do it. I was saying exactly these words yesterday to and the second question is, I am a very emotionally connected person. 
very sensitive. And when Papa wanted to go back to his home, I did not want him to leave for America. He was healthy. He had a beautiful home. He had a little village to look after it. And his son was not far away. If he got sick, the son and the daughter-in-law seemed wonderful, could have looked after him. So why that? Two questions. So Thank you, sir. I'll take the first one. Okay, I'll, I'll take the first one. Uh, about architecture, again, I had mentioned to, to the young lady who asked the first question about, about the architecture question. Uh, He's giving some good microphone. Sorry, sorry. He's giving some good microphone. Good microphone? Yeah. So. <laughs> Again, I speak of uh, uh, architecture. I mentioned that you know the film is about a home, the making of a home, the destruction of a home, fixing on home, fixing your own, own life before you can actually call yourself successful. Why are those Why are those uh, stilts in the house? Why is there a big hole up there? Uh, the father comes in and does a little bit of a sweep and cleans up things, but he needs to build his own home and be be an independent young man. So in that sense, the choice of it, Architecture. Also, it gave us a great, great uh, opportunity to speak of the old and the new. Uh, Why even the computer conversation we have with your son is about the old and the new. Uh, what do we embrace? What do we adopt? Do we not listen to people who have the old world wisdom that comes our way? Uh, so the computer versus the hand drawn. And that's why the idea of Taj Mahal, the idea of and the best part is he's a bloody liar. He's a good sketcher. He's been sketching all his life. But when his father says, you can't do anything on a computer, he says, pretty much, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the idea of the old and the new and the masculinity that I mentioned a little earlier comes into play. And I think architecture gave us a, a great foot in the door uh, for that theory. Uh, and in the end, when he's speaking to Makija in the boardroom, primarily he's talking to his father of things that he had taught him. And then now he's listening. And he should have listened. And there was that one passing remark, which was said on the balcony, India, 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 everything is glass and steel. And he said, he, he's, he's standing in front of all, all, those, all those buildings throughout the film. And he still doesn't get it. Because there's a spontaneous rejection to not accept what your father is saying. He's sitting there, he understood, you know, putting the thing up there, he's looking at uh, the, the, the model, it's, it's merging with the background, he still doesn't get it because you have to reject the words your old man is saying. And finally when he gets it, when at his lowest point, when he, he's been given the, the bitter pill of truth, you call this a house, you call this a car, and you broke your mother's heart privately saying you broke my heart, but he didn't want to say it, so he said, which time the mother's heart is broken? He gets it then. And so that being a fool, especially you learn the hardest lessons when you're at the lowest point in life. And he learned it then. So I don't know the answer to your question, but you know, pick it up from there. Please, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> the, the answer to the second question is, uh, your second question is, is, ends up being a, comp a compliment uh, in a way, which is, if we get invested in characters, God willing, if, if he were God, we hope, uh, we, we imagine what we want for them. We start to, we start to. Uh, I, I hope they end up together. I hope he stays there and he has a lovely home. That's that's wonderful because it means you care. Um, I think, and it could be. There's another lovely story where he lets his son become a man with his girlfriend or fiance. Lets him have that part of his life by himself, and they're a healthy couple. And so they visit in Florida, and the family's wonderful that way. So there are a lot of things to think for, and I think we just look for a form follows function in script as well, which is to say, in the end, he had to let his son be, um, grow into a man. So it's not the right answer, but it's the answer for these two hours, and we hope that perhaps he does move back, or they go visit a lot in Florida, and all the kids play together, but it's a real compliment that, that you even consider that you, I wish he stayed, or you know, I wish they could be together, that's, that's lovely. I mean, I mean, I mean, I
all, all the pioneers back in the day, all the pioneers back in the day, Adesha Hirani, Surab Modi, Homi Wadia, and all their company names ended with movie tone. And I just thought it would be a nice throwback to the times where life was simpler, movies were about, you know, simpler in that sense. Uh, even, the, even the logo that we shot with the rotating uh, Irani movie tone, which is made out of cardboard and thermocol, uh, you know, like the good old days, and actual smoke, but and no digital, so I just felt it's a kind of throwback to the, to the old uh, uh, Parsi. Uh, but but you, you may not know that the grandson and the great-grandson of Adesh Irani are sitting next to me. What are you telling me? That's why I wanted the mic. Oh my god. Okay. My god, Adesh Irani, ladies and gentlemen, I stand up to say this. Adesh Irani produced, directed the first Indian Talkie Alamara. Yes. Oh. Yeah? And it's been incredible. Uh, and I want to say one more thing. Uh, your Shakur is your father. Yeah, that was my father. Your father. Yeah. The handsomest man in the world. Yeah. Oh, maybe second to the two of us. But, anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, but Shakur Irani used to come to a wafer shop yes. every day. And my father. And your grandfather knew each other. My father, who passed away before, was born. And they owned a cinema which was bang opposite my house. Our house. It was called the Alexander Cinema. Oh, yeah. oh. Yes. And the Alexander Cinema is where my mother would send me every day to watch a movie. At Adesha Irani's uh, theater. And my father had given to Bird and Melody, uh, to this play in the interval, the, the music in the interval, my father had gifted that, that record. So just to say, I mean, this is so beautiful. Uh, it's so wonderful to meet the grandkids of uh, Adisha Hirani, the pioneer of the talkie in India. So big, big hand to you. connecting with the relationships as well. So Avinash, there was a question. So in Laila Majnud, we had the seven stages of love. 
so here again, is this a father-son seven stages of love, that kind of thing? <laughs> you can actually, uh, I think you can discover many more stages to that relationship. Yes. Uh, because there are many more years spent together, uh, many more moments which you probably wouldn't find in the Leila Majnu story. A uh, father-son yes. story is very, very unique. Uh, I think every guy who's sitting here would have had a story to themselves. Everyone has a father-son story. Like I, I, I also know uh, mother-daughter stories, and I'm sure everyone has a story to their own. Uh, this one beautiful, was, was, was beautiful about this one is what's, what's beautiful about this one is how the film takes off from a point of you know they don't like each other, and then they have to stay together for those 48 hours, and how things happen between them. I think it just set. It almost sounds like a thriller that, that you see the father son getting into. Yeah. And it's just written in such a comical way that uh, I, I, I really feel that it would be beyond the seven stages that we're talking about. It's much more than And uh, the you. partner surely helps you in connecting as well. So Shreya played beautifully. That connection was yeah, you were like beautiful. Do <laughs> you have a question for Shreya? People on top, yeah, people up there. No, we have one right here. Oh, right. Hi. Um, yes, yeah, this is both for Shreya and for Bowman Center. Um, I think so much of the film picked up on kind of characters that we're not familiar with, but we've seen before, the traditional dad, and the kind of son is trying to convince them that the like, modern way is also positive. But one thing that felt unfamiliar and new was how you broke the mold on the modernity of the relationship with the girlfriend. And I thought it was really cool to see, and I'm just curious why you wanted to portray this, you know, older man who comes from a background that's traditional, has got the typewriter, but also is pretty open-minded about his son's girlfriend staying in the house and then going and getting a drink with her and just having a laugh and things like that. That was really refreshing. Sure, yeah, you go for it. Speak about, you speak over here. Yeah, there's an unfrozen in the first question, so I didn't say this earlier, but I loved how all the female characters were portrayed, be it my character, be it Anu's character, be it the mother's character, you know, when any character speaks about her, you can understand that she's a strong baby, you know. And like you said, the, the relation that we share is actually filled with warmth because there's a common factor, which is the love um, for, you know, Amen. So I think that's what brings them together. And like you said, um, people rise to the occasion, so it's beautiful that, you know, he, like you said, is open-minded. And uh, even for my character, it was, that was the, um, I think, the heartbeat of it, that, you know, there is love for this man, and it's his father, and that translates to love for the father. You know, so there's a lot of respect and love over there, and that's why, you know, they have such a warm bond, and, um, yeah. I think that's so, so well said, Shreya. That, that, that's so well said that you identify three female characters. And sometimes, and this, this is all thanks to my friend, is that we wrote a strong woman, uh, female character, but not just aggressively strong. Someone who can be strong, but at the same time nurturing. And I think all three characters do have their own little shades of, uh, including the mother. The mother was in one pain in the backstack to live with, let me tell you. But, but the old man loved her dearly and accepted what, you know, uh, the, the way she was. Would your mother ever, you know, would, would she ever let me be the way I am? And, and those references are so beautifully planted in there. But I want to say something about Shreya's uh, performance. And I'll say a quick word about my friend Avinash's performance. That the last scene where she looks at him uh, and lets him know that you're okay, you're mine, and it's written in the script in, in the stage directions, that she looks at him, she found her man again, either they, there's love floating around that room or they are prepared to make love on their table or whatever. <laughs> so, 
So, so I, I think she communicated that just with three looks. And that's so difficult for an actress and so beautifully done. Three looks. Yeah. She put money back in space. She let her boss know. She manipulated the room in many ways. She manipulated the room beautifully. And, and she did it so subtly. And then she looked at him and said, and there's a beautiful line which Alex has written. Uh, and, and if they love it, which I'm sure they will, that's <laughs> only an issue. And I think that's a beautiful line. And she had kudos. Beautifully. And, and, and big word for, for Avinash. I think it, for 70% of the film, you, you, you know, actors, when in doubt, shout. <laughs> and Avinash did not get a moment in the film and he had to control himself because he's smoldering inside because he can't tell his father that he kind of can't handle this idiot anymore. <laughs> and, and when he lets go, Alex, Alex came up with those lines. I had written up Hashan. <laughs> Alex read it down to those three lines. We were, as usual, in a pub when we wrote most of the film. We were in a pub in Pete's Tavern in New York, where O. Henry wrote his short stories. We used to sit in O. Henry's booth and take his blessings and, and, and write it. Alex suddenly repeat. Alex, Alex is a closet actor. Let me tell you, he's a closet actor. He would act out that scene over here. Smile, go! He would shout at everybody. The pop would turn and say, "What the hell's wrong with this guy?" And he did it with so much passion, and it just bearing it down to three thoughts. It's my car. I've been driving this car for the last ten years without your hand on the handbrake. Basically saying, "I don't need teach you. I never need you. I never miss you." And it's so beautiful, and that brings us to Anyash's performance. That's the only time you got to yell and shout. And I could love to yell and shout. <laughs> you know, and, and so kudos, uh, Avinash, it's, it's a, it was a pleasure. And, and I'm honored to, be, to work with you. And, and of course, my darling, uh, Pooja. Alex, if I could add before we wind up. Yeah, I, mean, I know you got to go. Well, we have to go. But I just want to say on the last We question. don't have to go anywhere. So we don't have to go anywhere. But I just want to say this. When, when it comes to the women in the script, and, and, and the, they're the women that, that I love, and somebody wants to ask me, because uh, if you look at all my stuff, uh, so how do you, you write women very well? I said, that's because I don't write them at all, right? They're just themselves. And the way, the balance of what's charming, what's beautiful, what's strong, what's firm, she comes up with a simple answer, which is, is like, am I supposed, is he supposed to be a child, or are you treating like a doll? So it's your father. It's, it's the simplicity of the truth. Yeah. She, I, I think she balances it all so beautifully. She's beautifully romantic, super tough, funny as well. It, it's just an amazing relationship and, again, amazing performance. I, I just want to say that about you don't write men, right? you just write characters. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for being with us for the Mental Boy. We are screening Nella after this, so if you're interested, feel free to stay in the theater. But I would really thank Omri to you for the q and and a beautiful cast of the Mental Boy. Thank you guys. And thank you so much everyone for being here. It means a lot. Thank you. What, man? Lady Smile? मेरी बीवी आ बैठी है क्या बोल रही है आप क्या बोल रही है जिन्हों में आप थैंक यू डालिंग और आप ये बीवी से हम कनेक्ट हुए क्योंकि मेरे घर में भी मेरे बीच वाली बेटी के साथ उसके फादर का बहुत सेम सेम है ऑल राइट थैंक यू सो मच मैं थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरीबॉडी इट वाज वंडरफुल थैंक यू Get my phone. <laughs>